Hi guys and welcome to this video on number patterns. My name is Darren from Esguru. Thanks very much for watching. Oh, can you do me a massive favor? Can you head to YouTube and subscribe? Oh, I didn't waste any time there, did I? The reason being is very few people watch mass videos and I'm sitting in a room talking to myself. By clicking that subscribe button, I actually know that someone out there is watching and it means the world to me. Now this video is part of the year 11 general maths course units one and two, but it doesn't matter if you're not in Australia, it's relevant throughout the world. What am I dealing with? Well, we're gonna be able to determine a simple rule for a sequence of numbers and be able to generate a sequence from a starting number and a simple rule. Now if you think oh, this is easy, trust me, Watch the video, it's the foundation for so much more that is coming. In year 12, recursion and finance is massive and being able to understand the basics to then lead to the more complicated stuff will see that you understand and be able to smash any question that they give you. All right, that's a hint from me. Now, as this is the first lesson in the topic, there really isn't very much to recap, but just note, as I've said there, it's really important for year 12. Massively important, particularly the finance stuff that can get quite tricky particularly if you don't understand what the, the recursion relation is. And again, I'm using language there you might not have met before, so stick with this video. Numbers can be completely random, right? I can write a list of numbers that can be completely random. Alternatively, that list of numbers may have some sort of a sequence. They followed some sort of an order or some sort of a pattern. And understanding the difference between a list of numbers and a sequence, really important. The language, very, very important. Now, sequences can be created in relation to the previous number. So, for example, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. What I seem to be doing is taking this number here, and it's arbitrary. I could have started at 0, I could have started at 100. So, it's important to know that the start number is dictated either by me or the question, right? And although it's start, it doesn't really mean anything, because numbers actually progress backwards. I can have 0 and minus 2, for example. But assuming that 2 is my start number, how do I get to my next number? I add 2. How do I get from that number to my next number? I add 2. And so we go on. So that's actually a rule. Uh, yes, it's some sort of um, yeah, some sort of pattern that means take the previous number and add 2 to get to the next number. Awesome. What about 2, 4, 8, 16, 32? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. What have I done there? Well, I've taken my previous number and I seemingly doubled it. Yeah, so 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. What about my 100, my 50, my 25, my 12.5? Well, I seem to have taken a number and halved it. So I've either divided it by 2 or I've multiplied it by a half. Hmm, interesting. Why would I multiply things by half? Why would I just say divide? Well, later on, we're not going to be able to divide things. We just want to think of things as how do I multiply, but we're going to have fractions. What about 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21? Well, basically, that is the Fibonacci sequence. Woo, world goes crazy. How do we do that? Well, I take the previous two numbers, I add them together, and I get the next number. So if I do 1 plus 2, I get 3. If I get 2 plus 3, I get five. And believe it or not, Fibonacci sequences out there in nature, pine cones, sunflowers, all very, very interesting stuff, but maybe not too deep for this particular example. And don't think that sequences just have to be whole numbers or decimal numbers, they can be fractions as well. So in that situation, we've got one on one, one on two, one on three, one on four. What's the rule? Well, basically add one to the bottom number or add one to the denominator in this situation, yeah? That's how simple it is. You're looking for a pattern between these, some sort of process to get. Now, the language of sequences becomes massively important because sequences can increase with no end. Now, I get a bit nervous saying that because, to be honest with you, ultimately they're going to get to infinity. But bearing in mind infinity isn't a number, it's a concept, then I suppose it won't ever end. But if I look at the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, it's just going to get bigger. It's going to increase and increase and increase and increase with no end. What about the sequence 150, 25, 12.5, 6.25? That's certainly going to decrease, but will it ever end? Well, actually, what we'll find out in a moment is that number will get smaller and smaller and smaller and tend to limit to the value of zero, because I'll get zero point something, zero point zero 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 point zero. It will get smaller and smaller and smaller until it effectively gets to one. So, actually, some sequences don't have a limit, 
Some do, and we've got to be able to try and work out how that is. Some sequences will oscillate between two or more values. So in that situation, one minus one, one minus one, one minus one, one minus one. Yeah, it could go on forever, really. And some will eventually have a limiting value. I've just said that. Some might even have just a constant value, right? Four, 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 four. That's it. It may be, I don't know what that could be, a two-sided coin. Both values are four. I'm throwing it. I'm always going to get a four. I don't really understand why we'd get a constant value. Now, here are some examples of sequences. Consider the following sequences and identify their behavior as increasing, decreasing, constant, or oscillating. Also state whether the sequence has a limiting value. So let's look at the first one. Minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three. Well, as I just said a moment ago, that is going to be a constant sequence. So the minus three, minus three, minus three, and minus three is going to be a constant sequence. What about the next one? 100, 90, 80, 70. So what's happening? We're taking away 10 each time. I can keep doing that. So in that situation, it is going to be a decreasing. So if we've got 100, 90, 80, 70, it's going to be decreasing. Is it going to have a limit? Is it going to get to a point where it just stops? It finishes. It can't take away 10 anymore. No, because theoretically we could go down to minus infinity and beyond. Yes, I know, sorry, Buzz Lightyear is my favorite. What about this one? 1,000, 100, 10, 1, 0 0.1. Well, basically it's definitely decreasing, isn't it? Because it's getting smaller. But is it going to go to a limiting value? Well, yes, because then we'll go to 0 0.001. 0 0.0001, 0 0.000. That's going to get so small at some point, it's effectively going to become zero. So that's decreasing, but it has a limit, all right? So it's going to get down to zero. What about the numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 25? Well, if you notice those numbers, 1, 4, 9, or 16 seems to be missing. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. I'll add the 16 in there. Basically, for the notes you're going to download, basically they are the square numbers. And as such, they are going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that there is going to be increasing. Is there going to be a limit? Nope, because it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger to infinity and beyond. I'm so sorry, I keep doing that. Uh, I've got the values of 10, minus 8, 10, minus 8. In that situation, it's going to oscillate. Is it going to have a limiting value? Not really, because if it oscillates between two, it's never going to end up at one particular value. And there we go. Those are examples of sequences and how we can do it. Now we move on to recursion. Recursion is so, so important, right? If you understand the basics of recursion, life is going to be awesome for you. It basically describes a pattern which is used to form a sequence of numbers. So the recursion rule, for example, might be to add three to the previous number, right? So you add three to one number in the list to get to the next number. So the example I gave there was four. Add three, I'm going to get to seven. Add three, I'm going to get to 10. Add three, I'm going to get to 13. Add three, I'm going to get to 16. And so you keep going, right? So in which case, our sequence or our recursive rule there, for example, would be to add three. Or a recursive relationship. I've got to be careful with the language here. But note, as I say here, sequences don't have to start with one or, in fact, be positive. We just tend to always choose positive numbers. It's easier, yeah? I chose this sequence to start at four. Why? Because I could. But generally speaking, the questions you're going to get will tell you what number to start at. They'll give you a start number and they'll give you sort of the pattern to do to get between number and number. So let's have a look. Look for a pattern or rule in each sequence and find the next number. So we've got two, eight, 14, 20. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I always look to see if I can add numbers on, then take numbers, then multiply. Right. Let's see. To get from two to eight, I'm adding six. To get to 8 to 14, I'm adding 6. 14 to 20, I'm adding 6. So in which set case, my rule would be to plus 6. All right, and don't forget the plus. And my next number would be 26. ka -ching. Oh, we like that one. What about this one? 5, 15, 45, 135. So let's add on first. So that's going to add on 10. If I add on 10, do I get no? Nah. So it's not an adding rule. Certainly not a taking away rule because things are getting bigger. So the next rule I would try is a times rule. So how do I go from 5 to 15? I'm going to times by 3. 15 to 45. If I times 15 by 3, do I get 45? I absolutely do. And I'm just going to check because I don't want to get tricked. 
If I times that by three, I get 135. So in which case, my rule is gonna be times by three. And how am I gonna do that? Well, it's 135 times three. So I'm gonna do 135 times three. Let's do a calculation, that's 15. Three threes are nine, add the one that gives me 10. That's 405. And yes, I could have used a calculator there. Probably quicker for me just to do it by pencil and paper. Oh, seven, four, one, minus two. Hmm. So let's, it's not gonna be a plus. So let's do a minus, that's my next one. So seven to four, I'm gonna take away three. If I take away three, do I get to one? I do. If I take away three, do I get to minus two? I do. So in which case, that's gonna be minus three. How do I get to my next number? I'm gonna do minus two, take away another three, which is gonna give me minus five. ka -ching. So being able to find the recursive rule is really, really important. And as I say here, Sequences don't really have a start. We can say where we want to start them, but basically sequences extend out to the right, or as I say here, to the left and to the right. So don't get tricked, but every single question that you're gonna do will probably give you a start. So example here, write down the first five terms. What is a term? It's a number. So the first five terms, I want five numbers of a sequence with a starting value five. So they've told me my starting value, there is my first number. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So I've got, I now put a number on each of those lines. And the rule is add three to each term. So I'm gonna take the current term, I'm gonna add three to it, which is gonna give me eight. I'm gonna add three to that, which is gonna give me eight, nine, 10, 11. Add three is gonna give me 14. Add three is gonna give me 17. And that's where I'm gonna stop. Sadly, in exams, lots of people keep going. <sighs> Don't, the question states it only wants five terms. I've got one, two, three, four, five terms, five numbers, I am done. Now, how can we use the CAS to do a recursion? Well, it just so happens I have a CAS calculator with me. I'm just gonna clear it down the screen, so just bear with me for a second, bring it back up. I'm gonna use the TI Inspire because it's exactly the same for the class pad, all right? So there we go. So I'm gonna to go to a calculator screen. Now, the important thing in a calculator is the ANS button. So if I go Control, and I go this little minus by the enter sign, you'll see that ANS comes up. That has stored my previous answer. At the moment, I don't have anything in that. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna delete it. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, let's see, well, let's do the question. Use the CAS, generate the first six terms. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I want six numbers there of the arithmetic sequence two, seven, 12. Whew. All right, so we've got two, seven, 12. So I know that my first number is two. So what I'm gonna do on my calculator is I'm gonna put a two and I'm gonna hit return. Now, the reason being is if I go control and answer, I'm gonna have two come up. So the calculator remembered I've got two, that my last calculation was two. Now, what was the rule here? To get from two to seven, I seem to be adding five. Is that true from seven to 12? It does, so my rule is plus five. So what I now want to do is get my calculator to work this out for me. And it's so clever because what I'm now gonna do is say, control minus, and I'm gonna do plus five. Now your calculator, or what this really stands for, is now take my last value, right? So take the current value or the last value or the one that I'm at and get my next value by adding five. Now when I hit enter, out comes seven. And it's replaced the ANS with the two because that was my last value. Now if I hit enter again, I don't wanna do ANS plus five again because your calculator is really flipping clever because if I hit enter again, it actually now goes, well your calculation was answer plus five, so I'm gonna take my previous answer and add five. There we go, seven plus five. So I'm now gonna hit return again, 17. Return again, 22. Return again, 27, I'm done. And I can keep hitting enter or return and it's just gonna keep giving me as many sequences as I possibly can. Oh, that is amazing, I love this, okay? So, doing recursion on the CAS for the class pad, lovely. Uh, sorry, for the TI Inspire, lovely. Now, the class pad actually has a pretty funky sequences section that the TI Inspire doesn't. So, when I get to that section later on, because we need to understand the notation for a sequence, for a recurrence relation, which we're not quite there yet, but when I get there, I'm gonna show you for the class pad users how funky and amazing it actually is. TI Inspire, there is sort of something, it's a little bit confusing to set up, but again, it's there if you need it to be. But, 
That's the end of this lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it has been useful. It's basic, I know, but it gets harder as we work through. But my name is Darren from Escrew. Thanks very much for watching. Subscribe if you can. Follow me on TikTok and all those other social media things. And hopefully I look forward to seeing you in another video. Please take care and stay safe.